Hi, good morning, my dear students. I'm Daphne Kaur. Today, I have a bottle of hydrochloric acid over here. But guess what? There is no concentrations labeled on it. How can we know the concentrations of the hydrochloric acid? The answer is we dehydrate the hydrochloric acid with NaOH. So, let us prepare the NaOH solutions. I have 2 grams of NaOH pellet mixed with 250 cubic centimeter of distilled water. Then, do you know what is the concentrations of NaOH solutions? From the calculations, the concentrations of NaOH should be 0.2 mol dm cube. But wait! Is it really 0.2 mol dm cube in, in reality? It's not exactly true in real life. Here's something you didn't expect. Just like how 50 cubic centimeter of distilled water mixed with 50 cubic centimeter of alcohol, it doesn't give you exactly 100 cubic centimeter solutions. You see, NaOH is a bit naughty. It absorbs water vapor and carbon dioxide from the air. So by the time you wait, the NaOH includes sodium carbonate, which is formed when NaOH mixed with carbon dioxide together with the moisture from the air. So, the concentrations of NaOH we calculated just now is no longer based on 2 grams of pure NaOH. That means we get a wrong concentration. So, what should we do? In this experiment, we need to find the concentrations of hydrochloric acid, HCl. To do that, we will use sodium hydroxide, NaOH. But here is the problem. NaOH is unstable in the air. Even though we prepare the NaOH solutions ourselves, it may not be truly accurate. That means when you weigh 2 grams of NaOH pellet, that mass actually includes impurity. So the amount of pure NaOH is less than 2 grams. So NaOH needs to be standardized before it is used to dilute with HCl. This is because NaOH is hygroscopic. It absorbs moisture from the air. Then NaOH is the liquid sense. It even absorbs so much of water that it may dissolve itself. Other than that, NaOH will react with carbon dioxide from the air to form sodium carbonate, which will reduce the NaOH purity. The unstable of NaOH will lower the actual concentrations of NaOH. As a result, we may overestimate the amount of NaOH and miscalculate the concentrations of HCl. That's why NaOH solutions need to be standardized before use in order to get accurate concentrations NaOH. This can be done by titrating NaOH with a primary standard like KHP. This ensures our calculations of concentrations of HCl more reliable and accurate. We need glass rod, beaker, electric balance, 250 cubic centimeter volumetric flux, distilled water, filter funnel, measuring cylinder, 50 cubic centimeter of burette, 250 cubic centimeter of conical flux, droppers, white towel, retort stand and clamp, 25 cubic centimeter of pipette and pipette fillers. We need NaOH pellet, KHP, hydrochloric acid, phenolphthalein. There are three parts in this experiment. Part 1, preparations of standard solutions. Part 2, standardizations of NaOH solutions using KHP. Part 3, dietrate NaOH with HCl to find out the concentrations of HCl. At first, use an electric balance to wake 2 grams of NaOH pellet. Then, transfer the 2 grams of NaOH pellet to a green beaker. Stir the solution using a glass root until the NaOH pellet has completely dissolved. 
Next, we use a funnel to transfer the solutions from the beaker to a 250ml volumetric flux. Next, rinse the beaker, glass root, and funnel with distilled water to ensure that all the dissolved NaOH pellet, the rinsing is transferred to the volumetric flux. Next, add distilled water until the level reaches 1 cm below the calibration mark. Then, use a dropper to add distilled water drop by drop until uh, the bottom of the meniscus reaches the calibration mark. Inverse the flux several times to make the solutions completely. Let's start part A. Pour the NaOH into the burette carefully. Remove the funnel. Add 2 to 3 drops of phenolphthalein and the solution should colorless in acid. Open the tap slowly using your thumb and two fingers. Don't twist the tap too fast. Just turn it gently to control the flow. Hold the neck of the conical flux with one hand and swirl gently. You may start with a faster flow as the pink starts to fade. Let the NaOH drip in, one drop at a time. When a light pink color appeared, the tap was closed and the conical flux was swirled for 30 seconds. If it turned colorless again, the flow of NaOH was added drop by drop until a pale pink color persisted. Record the final reading to the nearest 0.05 cubic centimeter from the burette. The titrations was repeated until two result difference by no more than 0.1 cubic centimeter to ensure accuracy. Now, let's go through the procedure of the experiment again. We already covered part 1 and part 2 which involve two steps, step A and step B. Next, we'll move on to the final part, part 3. Titrate NaOH with HCl to determine the concentrations of the acid. This is the setup for titrations of NaOH against HCl. The technique for performing titrations has already been discussed in part 2, step B. Or you can refer to my video title, Perfect Your Titration Technique at the link below.